trying to figure a lot of things out. I found myself confused. I found myself um, down. I found myself uh, doubting. Um, I found myself, it's, it's just been this jumble of trying to figure out adulting. <laughs> you guys doing welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Miriro and this is of course Miriro moments I really do hope you decide to join the leave earth MT team by subscribing down below or switching on the notification <laughs> or switching on the notification bell so that you get notifications whenever I post a new video I've missed you guys and I really do hope you guys are doing well um, and because I've been gone for so long I feel like it's, it's been over three months you guys it's been over three months <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> a lot has been happening and I figured in order for me to start, you know, posting and uploading videos again, you guys obviously need to be in the loop in terms of what's been going on in my life. So we're going to start with the life update, but I'm also going to combine this with the Q&A that I was supposed to do before I actually stopped uploading videos. And this was the Zim Q&A where people were asking me about moving back to Zim and stuff like that, right? So... The first life update is a very simple one, guys. I am actually struggling with my phone um, because the battery life now is just terrible. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's bad. And I still film with my phone, guys. Yo, feel free to like, you know, buy me a camera or something. I would really appreciate it. Every single time I actually want to purchase a camera or something along those lines, when I do get the money, there is always something more important that I need. Like, it's so weird. But and I have to get a new laptop or something like that's literally what's been happening the whole time and i'm just praying that soon enough by god's grace i will be able to get a camera that way it will be easier for me to film other major life updates is the fact that i had to get an eye surgery i think i might insert pictures here <laughs> and to be honest i've never felt pain like that in my life <laughs> I've never felt pain like that um it was really really difficult so obviously the first few weeks i had to have an eye patch and then after i removed it it was extremely painful to be in light and guess what you need to film videos light so whether i'm using a ring light or if it was sunlight i literally couldn't like look towards the light for a long time because it would just be tearing up you know so that's been a bit difficult to come to terms with but um overall i thank god that you know i am recovered i think i am fully recovered now i am on my way there obviously now i'm looking at a ring light and initially i was tearing up i had to literally restart this but i think i'm doing much much better than i was doing before and i'm so thankful that i was surrounded by my family i was surrounded by you know people who genuinely care and who were willing to you know assist me when i couldn't do stuff i had to be driven around <laughs> i had to um you know there are times where i literally just had to be in my room and it was dark and my little sister would come serve me food so that was really nice that i got to actually have the surgery when i was surrounded by people who could assist me and if you prayed for me if you reached out during that time thank you so much god bless you um, i really really do appreciate it and the last major life update was the fact that i couldn't film because honestly i had such a demanding job um before i even got the surgery my job was very demanding i was working 9 10 11 <laughs> hours a day you know um and that was very difficult because i had to also study so i go to work sometimes i'm so tired i don't even have the energy to study so it's like okay priorities you know and also let's talk about law <laughs> and actually you know having to write exams after you've gotten your degree <sighs> But that's a story for another day. So let's get into the Q&A. Uh, you guys sent me questions on Instagram and on my WhatsApp about my move to Zim and how life is currently. I think it's also a good way for you guys to be updated about what's been going on in my life, right? The first question was, what do you miss most about South Africa? I miss my friends. I miss my community. Um, I really, really do. Uh, I miss my friends so much. I was so used to being around people, always having somebody to call up, you know, 
let's go for lunch let's do this together and stuff like that i really really miss that and i also just miss my community my church community especially the next question is do you plan to settle in zim or are you seeing where life takes you um and for me this reminds me of a quote that i want so i think it was in relation to jobs and it say that don't ever attach yourself to a job attach yourself to a purpose i definitely don't ever want to attach myself to a place even if it's my home country or my birth country i think i just have to trust god and see where he is taking me um but also i know that i am an adventurer i am a wanderer i am one of those people who loves to explore so i don't know whether i'm going to explore in the sense that i'm going to be traveling around and just seeing places or i'm actually going to move and another thing for me is i don't think it's recent it has happened over a number of years but i've gained this love for africa um i really really think that i am called to do something in africa so the next question is how have you been how has life been i think beginning of this video i told you guys how i've been it hasn't been easy healing from surgery guys yo i do not wish that upon anyone i feel like getting surgery is like prolonged pain because you have it now and then you still have to go through the recovery and oh yo and i am a person who's like okay let's just feel the pain once and then double <laughs> you know so i i don't I, it hasn't been great um but now i'm fine you know it's not bad but how life in itself has been um life has been good you know i think i've learned to be grateful i've learned to to see the beauty in the little things you know i think especially in this world of social media and stuff you're always told that you know everything has to be extravagant you have to be traveling and vacations and fire fireworks everything is great and then i'm just like okay but you know my life is not that right now you know i haven't been on vacation this year i haven't been going on very extravagant like events and whatnot i would love to but that's just not the case saka you work with what's there and i really am learning to embrace and love the simple day-to-day -day routine and life um and learning being the key word because i don't think i've i've being that person um i've been i'm a very outdoor person like i like being outdoors i like doing stuff so when i feel as though there's routine in life i get so bored my way it's bad i get so bored so being in this place where i'm actually embracing that is a good place to be i think was life post uni how fun is that <laughs> for me i think it's been trying to figure a lot of things out i found myself confused i found myself um down i found myself uh doubting um i found myself it's it's just been this jumble of trying to figure out adulting you know and and i think for me this is a time where i've learned that it takes one brick at a time in order to build an entire house you literally just have to build a brick at a time so i've been trying to concentrate on that that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step so that's where i am life after uni is me building one brick at a time i'm not concentrating on the whole house i'm not concentrating on the visions that i have in years to come and everything that i want i'm concentrating on what can i do in the now how can i be faithful in the now to ensure that i achieve the dreams and visions that i have later on in my life so and that hasn't been great um it's been it's been difficult um to sort of think okay actually hmm i might have thought i know what i do want i might have thought life is going to turn out this way but hmm, that's actually not the case so how do we navigate that um but also there is also the good part to it where you recognize as an adult you know you can you can you know you can do things that you weren't able to do in uni like i feel like now that i'm back home the treatment is slightly different you know i'm not just sent to do anything i'm i'm now sent to represent the family at family gatherings when my parents are not able to make it so that's also something different so that's been kind of cool the next question was how's the auntie going <laughs> yes i think a big part of my life now is the fact that my niece is actually living with us our little prolonged COVID guest whom we love so much <laughs> that's been amazing um on my instagram sometimes i share a lot about her and with her and stuff so that's been fun being life through 
through her eyes is amazing guys i don't know i think that's why god says that we need to have childlike faith how has it been being able to celebrate your birthday and those of your loved ones together after so many years it's been amazing it's really really been great um yeah that's that's the short of it i don't always get to experience having my whole family together in the same place at the same time but the fact that i was able to celebrate my birthday with my family was it was really really nice so i'm really grateful for that um do you plan on returning to south africa do you ever feel like moving back to south africa do you plan on staying in zim these were questions that were asked by different people but i felt like they were very similar the question is simply do i plan on moving back to south africa and honestly the short answer to that is right now i don't plan to right in the now i don't plan to i have no plans of moving back to south africa we'll see how life turns out but in the now i don't um the next question was are you looking for opportunities outside zimbabwe and uh yes i'm looking for opportunities everywhere currently yes um how is it trying to pursue a career in zimbabwe given the economic situation i <laughs> You know what i'm going to do a separate video on this but um i think it looks different for everyone but overall it's not that easy okay was it difficult to transition after moving to zim i'm just a little anxious when i finish what my options will look like so this is someone i'm thinking is not studying in zimbabwe and once or is considering to move back was it difficult yes and no because for me the first few months of me moving back were quite busy i mean i got back in december i have to, i had to assist my older sister to plan her wedding um there was just a lot going on but also there were things that i had to adjust to the fact that there there's no change in my shops when you get in <laughs> like when you buy stuff in a grocery store you have to ensure that you're going there either with eco cash or something and the money that you have is exactly enough to buy the things that you need to buy um especially if it's us dollars because there are high chances that you're not going to be able to get change it's little things like that where you realize oh my goodness things are so different accessibility one thing i really really struggle with being back in zim is just the delivery system like being able to order food being able to shop online and get the things delivered to you we are still so behind and that was something that i was very reliant on when i was in essay you know i would have uber eats i would like i wouldn't have to like buy stuff especially last year we ended up actually getting groceries online so a lot of things were just convenient and here things are not very accessible just because it's my experience doesn't mean that it will be somebody else's experience so if this is you and you're really anxious about moving back to zim just ask yourself what are the what are the things that are making you anxious and is the environment conducive for you to at least flourish and i think one thing that brings me comfort is the fact that at least i am home i don't have to pay rent i don't have all these things so for you you also have to look at your specific context and find out whether you will be comfortable when you get back here so that you at least have the chance to transition to being back in zim you know you're not thrown in the deep end hi bo yeah i don't know what i want to add <laughs> Someone asked, how's Mr. Miri? I think this was a WhatsApp question because on my WhatsApp stories, I call my future husband, Mr. Miri. In fact, in my head, that's what I call him. <gasps> Girl, I have not met him yet. So I can't tell you how he is. I'm pretty sure he's fine wherever he is. <laughs> the next question is, if you could go back and make the decision on whether to return to Zim or not, would you still make the same decision? And the answer is yes, I would, because I don't think that the circumstances in which i made the decision that i made to come back home would have changed so i know that when i made the decision i had like literally sort of considered everything that was surrounding why i made that decision so i would still come back home what challenges have you experienced being back in the motherland um <laughs> i i think simply just adapting um as i said i think i mentioned this like the whole the fact that when i go grocery shopping i need to ensure that i have just enough money if i'm going to pay cash i still don't have like an eco cash person i still have to ask my cousin to ask his eco cash person to send me like it's complicated so the currency bit honestly has been difficult to adjust to even if i had studied in zim 
finishing my a degree and now literally getting into the career field is a bit of an adjustment and i think it comes with its own challenges some are even internal believing that you're going to be able to actually deliver and you're actually going to be able to work within your field do you even remember everything that you studied in uni you know all those things honestly being a challenge in that way just adjusting to adulthood you know what advice would you give to a young girl faced with the same decision it's quite easy to think just because this is my experience then that's going to be everybody else's experience but i'm well aware that that's not the case so if this is you who is faced with the same decision i think it's important for you to consider all the surrounding circumstances and ensure that you use and you make the best decision that is for you you can't listen to just about anyone but if you're a person who works in accountability who works in community then you have people around you who pray with you you have people around you who are able to give you the kind of advice that you need who know the ins and outs of your life you know what i mean so for me in order to reach this decision it wasn't also i did make the decision on my own but i also had to ask the people that mattered to me i had to ask my sisters i had to pray i had to ask my disciple all those things so for me the first thing is just consider all surrounding circumstances second obviously this should be the first pray pray about it you know honestly when the word of god says that do not lean on your own understanding but trust in the lord with all your heart and he will order your steps he will show you the right path to take i think that is very clear and even if you are to make a mistake god is faithful enough to still show you where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing so trust that god loves you and he knows the future that he has for you so you need to reach that decision with him so just lean on him and ask god what you are supposed to do i guess i would just say pray about it consult the people that matter most to you and consider the practicalities of it like practically if i am to move this is how life is going to go about i think this is the last question and it's what strategies did you use to get a job luckily for me the very first opportunity i took up sort of found me um because one of the directors actually reached out and told me that they're recruiting and um, i should consider applying which is what i did and then obviously there were interviews and stuff but over time i've actually realized that you can use there's so many like platforms where you can actually look for a job you can physically go and look for the places or go to the places that you want to work for but you can also use linkedin you can use you, i think i should do an entire video on this as well but there's so many ways of going about it nowadays online search online linkedin just to ensure that people who are around you are aware that you are looking for specific opportunities so that they can also um, help you if they come across anything. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed down below. Um, ensure that you switch on your notification bell so that I, you know, I can post more content and you guys will actually see it as soon as it comes. I think the next one is actually going to be a vlog that I filmed a long time ago. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. I really do hope you subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching this one. See you in the next one. Toodles. Bye.